hello and welcome to Tradeflow Television. Bringing you valuable analysis and actionable intelligence through the global commodity markets. These are some of the key topics that we will be looking into in today's program. First, let's take a look at the overnight headlines which are impacting the commodity markets. Cambodia has begun extracting its first crude oil from fields in the Gulf of Thailand, in a venture between Singapore's Chris Energy Limited Chris SI and the government, both parties said on Tuesday, bringing an end to years of delays. Prime Minister Hun Sen announced the news on social media while Chris Energy said the concession started production on Monday and would progress in phases once new wells were commissioned and completed. Cambodia has struggled to develop its oil fields as few companies were willing to invest in the area following a global oil price slump in 2014. Chinese meat importers and processors have called on exporters in countries with COVID-19 outbreaks to step up checks on shipments before they are sent to the world's biggest market, the country's top industry group said. China has been importing a large quantity of meats this year, and has detected virus on the packaging of cold chain products many times. Even as lots of disinfection has been done domestically, Gao Guan, spokesman for the China Meat Association, said by telephone on Tuesday. China has ramped up disinfection and virus testing on frozen food after it found coronavirus on imported products and packaging. Moving on to the top news in the energy sector. This year was like no other for oil prices. Even as global prices end the year at about $51 a barrel, near the average for 2015 to 2017, it masks a year of volatility. In April, U.S. crude plunged deep into negative territory and Brent dropped below $20 per barrel, slammed by the COVID-19 pandemic and a price war between oil giants Saudi Arabia and Russia. The remainder of 2020 was spent recovering from that drop as the pandemic destroyed fuel demand around the world. While the short-lived decline of U.S. oil futures below negative $40 a barrel is not likely to be repeated in 2021, new lockdowns and a phased rollout of vaccines to treat the virus will restrain demand next year, and perhaps beyond. Oil rose on Tuesday as the United States moved toward expanding pandemic aid payments, which could spur fuel demand and which also encouraged investors to take on more risk in hopes of stronger economic growth. Brent crude LCOC1 was up 44 cents, or 0.9%, at $51.30 a barrel by 16.50 GMT, while U.S. West Texas Intermediate crude CLC1 futures added 51 cents, or 1.1%, to $48.13 a barrel. The Democratic-led U.S. House of Representatives voted to meet President Donald Trump's demand for $2,000 COVID-19 relief checks on Monday. Moving on to metal price moves. Aluminium prices fell to their lowest level in a month on Tuesday as investors worried that rising production would add to surpluses, while copper rose on hopes a U.S. aid package would boost economic activity. Three-month aluminium on the London Metal Exchange was down 2% at $1,989.50 a tonne by 17.15 GMT after touching $1,982, its lowest level since November 27. Global primary aluminium output climbed 4.1% year-on-year, data showed last week, while the daily production figure increased to the second-highest level on record, according to Capital Economics. Zimbabwe has banned the use of mercury in mining and placed controls on its release from industrial operations, joining several countries which have phased out the toxic metal, state media reported on Tuesday. The ban will affect small-scale gold miners who use it to extract gold. Small-scale miners now produce more than half of the country's bullion output. The state-owned Herald newspaper reported that Zimbabwe had ratified the Minamata Convention banning the use of mercury in mining and put in place regulatory measures to stop its release from industrial equipment like boilers, incinerators and power stations. Finally, we have the most recent news on the financial market. Europe will see its biggest transfer of share trading in more than two decades when stock exchanges open for business in 2021, with Brexit shifting its centre of gravity away from London. While market players hope that years of preparation since Britain voted to leave the European Union means the transition of most euro-denominated assets like shares and derivatives out of the country will be relatively smooth, the long-term impact is unclear. This is a big bang event and that is one of the things that the market hasn't truly understood yet, 
Alastair Haynes, chief executive of London-based share trading platform Aquas Exchange, told Reuters. That is all for today's news on the commodity market. Stay tuned to Trade Flow TV as we continue to provide you with more updates. You can also follow us on Twitter at TradeflowTV1 which allows you to watch our program on your mobile device or desktop.